hi guys. Firstly, thank you again for viewing one of my videos. Um, I, I wonder if I can ask you a favor to try and share this if you could. Uh, it'd be great. The subscriptions went up by 25% um, is probably the best way of putting it. it. It actually was only by about, we're on 41 or something like 42 or something like that, so it's not huge. But it would be lovely to break the 100 barrier as our initial goal to try and get this channel up to 100. 100 subscribers so uh, i'd really appreciate it if you would share like pass it on spread the word whatever that would be fantastic today's video um, is going to be about range and about um, the economics of driving a little bit slower there's lots of forums i've read about um, you know the best ways to try and sort of preserve um, the battery and to get the best range out of the battery so i thought we'd actually give that a little bit of a, a test um, and so, well, here's an example. It's actually quite a good example to explain. Also, it'll allow me to test this camera. New camera, uh, new resolution, shooting in 2.7K to try and zoom in on the screen a little better. So hopefully it looks okay. And hopefully a new mic as well, so the sound should be a bit better. Apart from my lisping, which I won't tell you about. Anyway, so um, 254 is the figure that I got on this particular trip, which was 147 miles, which was to the other, just nearly Bath and back. Um, 254, which I think is pretty good. 250, 240, 250 for a standard range plus is pretty good. But there's been a lot of debate on forums about, you know, making small differences can have a huge impact. So we're going to test that today. I'm going to do a little trip. Uh, I'm going to switch the air conditioning off, first of all. Um, I'm going to do a little trip uh, two, twice exactly the same environment just me in the car um, gonna do them straight after each other so the weather will remain constant um, uh, and then one I'm gonna do it's mostly dual carriageway so I'll speed the video up one I'm gonna do at um, sort of 70 miles an hour on the motorway one at 65 miles on the motorway and we'll see if this what out what hours per mile changes um, for that particular trip so I'm gonna just reset this for this first trip Okay, so we have 205 miles range. I'm also going to just check we 2,030 miles on the clock for this car. So I just want to check those two things to see what it looks like when I get back. So I'm going to I'm going to speed up most of um, most of this video for you because there's not going to be a huge amount for you to see. Um, so I will speed that up. Uh, I'm hoping this camera looks pretty good and isn't too bouncy about. It's the new um, GoPro 7 black. Well, new. they brought GoPro 8 out now, haven't they? But the GoPro 7 is a bit better value for money. It is vibrating quite a bit on that stand, but we shall wait and see. Okay, so I'm going to stay quiet now and let this fast forward a little bit. Um, the journey, I should add just before I do that, the journey is about 20 miles, something like that. Uh, a little part of it is going to be like this, which is normal sort of A roads just to get me to the dual carriageway. But this part is probably less than um, a mile before I'm onto the dual carriageway. And then once I get onto the dual carriageway for this first trip, um, I will do 70 miles an hour on autopilot um, so that you know we know exactly where we are. So here we go. Okay, you join me back now. Um, I've just done the little piece of dual carriage, which is literally a mile, if that, to the main roundabout, where I'm now going to join the, uh, I think it's the A40 dual carriage, where we'll do 70 miles an hour constant. Um, it's a, I think it's a nine mile stretch, so 18 miles up and down to the Ragland uh, roundabout. Um, and then we shall do the return trip back to my drive. And when I'm on the drive, that's when we'll look at the figures then. Uh, to see exactly um, what we've done as far as how much range guesstimate has gone down, how many real miles have actually gone, um, and also, you know, what our watt hours per mile is coming at at 70 miles an hour. And I'll repeat the exact same trip then at 65 to see if that five miles an hour really does make a difference. If I was doing a trip to London and back, you know, you'd be looking at what, 130 miles each way, 260 mile round trip, 
Um, the time difference between doing 70 miles an hour and 65 is insignificant, I would say. Um, and if it does have a big impact on the efficiency of the car, then brilliant. Let's, uh, let's hope that is the case. So here we are. We're on the dual carriageway. I'm going to get up to 70 miles an hour and do, to the best of my ability, try and stay at 70 miles an hour. I am, of course, a little bit dependent on um, other vehicles, but we shall wait and see. join me now as I'm just about to reach the halfway point just about to get uh, this is the halfway halfway point of the first trip I'm just about to get uh, to the roundabout here to, to make the return journey um, interestingly the um, I was able to maintain uh, 70 miles an hour pretty much the entire way uh, did drop to 69 on one occasion but uh, pretty consistent which is good and at the halfway point we are on 244 watts per hour as you can see on the screen 9.6 miles back on the dual carriageway now so we're going to go back up to 70 miles an hour um, on autopilot just engage autopilot there oh, it's funny that's twice that's happened actually on this uh, trip a couple of little uh, auto auto steer not available and first time I've seen that happen on this particular road Okay, so we're on three kilowatts that we've actually used now, 265, so that's altered quite a bit since the roundabout even, and 10 miles exactly. So we're back on 70, uh, we'll just see how this return trip goes. Okay, so we're, um, you're joining me now as we reach the, uh, the end of the dual carriageway part of our little test, and um, you can see on the, screen in front of me we're on 17.1 miles still got to drive back to the driveway yet five kilowatts used and 264 is the watts per mile that we've used so far um, so we'll get to the driveway now and have a good look at the the first trips figures Okay, so we are back in the driveway. We have finished the first trip, 19.1 miles, and I would say probably 18 miles of that, 17 and a half to 18 miles of that is dual carriageway. And all of that dual carriageway, bar a tiny little bit, nothing to, to walk about, talk about really, was all at 70 miles an hour. So we have done, we have, well, first of all, let's go through all of the figures. We now have 181 miles left on the gasometer, um, and we've done, physically done 19.1 miles. So we'll have a look at the difference at the very end of this video as to what those figures stack up like. Um, we've, we've actually done 19.1 miles. We've done, we've used five kilowatts of energy from the battery, and we've done on average 2.48 watts per mile. I actually think that's pretty good. On the basis this is mostly dual carriageway, mostly at 70 miles an hour, the rest of the time at the road speed of the time. And let's just have a little look, that should be right anyway, 2049, should be, those two are actual figures, aren't they? So that should tally up. Um, okay, so 19.1, five kilowatts used, magic figure of 248 and 181 left on the gasometer. So let us now just reset that and take our second trip where the dual carriageway um, mileage will be done at 65 miles an hour. So just gonna reset that, here we go. And off we go. Okay. Join me at the beginning of the, dual, of the main dual carriageway of trip B. Just wanted to show you that what I've done here now on the autopilot is just to dial back, you know, automatically because it's a 70 mile an hour speed limit, it would set the autopilot at 70. 
um, but you can dial that back using the right scroll wheel here. Um, so I've dialed it back to 65. So we are now doing a very pleasant, peaceful <laughs> 65 miles an hour. Um, so far, just an update on the figures here for this trip B. 2.9 miles, one kilowatt of energy used, and we're on a watt per mile of 292. 289, which is coming down. So there we are. We'll catch up again very soon. So you join me now at the halfway point. I'm just approaching the roundabout to go around to do the return trip. And I've got to say, I I'm a little bit shocked at the figure if this is going to be true. Um, because it has made, I think, quite a significant difference. Um, it's Firstly, I would say it's a bit more difficult actually to to stay at 65 miles an hour on a motor on a dual carriageway because you do end up getting behind lorries a little more often and uh, and things like that. So it's a little bit more difficult from that respect. Didn't feel much difference. Should have timed it, I guess, but you know you can work that out, can't you? How much slower it is. I don't think it's a huge difference. Um, I'm just going to get back up to 65 now. But the figures. At this point, I mean 230, 233, already significantly down on the first trip that we did. Um, but there we are. Anyway, I'll catch up with you in a moment. Okay, well, you uh, you join us as I approach the roundabout back at Epic Veni. Always love that view of the sugar loaf there. I hope you can see that. Probably not, but it's beautiful. Um, as we approach this roundabout, we've got a little bit more to go yet, a little bit of dual carriageway, and then the A roads back to the house. 243 is the um, watts per mile, um, 238. I, I do have a feeling it's going to be, it's definitely going to be lower, um, but it was always going to be lower, but it's really by how much it's lower will be the interesting thing, and whether actually it's worth sacrificing that little bit of extra speed um, for, you know, on a road trip to get a bit more out of the battery, we shall see. Um, and we'll go through then all the figures in their entirety. I'll take it back in the house and we'll really have a little look at the figures and do some analysis. I, I know it's not 100% scientific lab laboratory conditions, I realise that, but I, it's probably as pretty good as you're going to get, um, you know, out on the, the open road. Um, you know, nothing's changed as far as the conditions go on the vehicle. And it'll be it'll be just it'll be interesting to see what it looks like. So we'll catch up with you again now when we get back to the house. Okay, we are just coming up for the final part of our trip. Um, I think we are going to see a significant difference based on the figures I've got in front of me at the moment. Um, it looks like sort of circa ten percent, which. It's more than I thought it was going to be, if those figures do hold up. Uh, we've just got a couple more yards to go. Um, as far as how did the trip feel differently, it, it does feel a bit slower at 65. There's no denying that to 70. Could you get used to it? Yeah, of course you could. And if you were trying to, um, you know, just trying to preserve that bit of energy if you had a road trip to do, um, is it worth doing it? Well, we'll see. Let's have a look, a little look at the figures now in a second and uh, you can come to your own conclusion. So, I've pulled up at the house. 19.1 miles, that matches. Thank goodness for that. Interesting. Four kilowatts. I have a feeling at the end of trip A, it was five kilowatts. Of course, that could be a percentage point bit, couldn't it? But 224 watts per mile. Um, I can't remember what it was at the end of the last one, but we shall have a little look at the stats now, compare the two. Uh, 161 is the miles on the guessometer, and of course it's uh, 2,068 miles actually on the car itself. So yeah, let's have a look at the figures and see whether or not it is worth conserving a bit of energy by doing 65 instead of 70 on motorway travel. Okay, so um, excuse the sort of crudity of the spreadsheet. Um, 
Anyway, so this is the trip we've done, 17th to the 7th, let's have a look. So trip A, actual miles were 2030 when we left out, 2049 when we came back. Um, so uh, on the tripometer, there was 19.1, actual 19, so not much variance here, that's fine. Um, range, interesting. So the range was 205 miles on the guessometer when we left for trip A. 280, sorry, 181 when we got back. So we'd used 24 miles of range according to the guessometer. We'd actually only traveled 19.1 miles um, and therefore a difference of 4.9, 20.41% differential um, between the accuracy of the guessometer and the actual miles for that trip, which was the 70 miles per hour trip that we did. So we used five kilowatts of energy. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, it says four on plan on trip B, but that could just be percentages, couldn't it? Um, but the watts per mile, I've got that wrong. That's WI there, isn't it? That should be WH. Never mind. You know what I mean? Watts per mile of 248 for that particular trip. So 248 is the critical figure there. Um, and then on trip B, where we did 65 miles an hour on the dual carriageway, um, Top figures are fine, actual miles, just to learn. range. 181 at the beginning of the trip, 161 on the gasometer on the return trip, so 20 miles of range used, but actual miles 19.1, meaning a difference of 4.5% versus 20.41% difference between the range, the guessometer range, and the actual miles taken on two identical trips, the only difference being 70 miles and 65 miles an hour. So obviously, um, range accuracy far more accurate when you're doing 65 as opposed to 70 miles an hour. Kilowatts used on trip B, four versus five in trip A, and the watts per mile of 224 versus 248 on trip A. So if we just have a little look at those figures, the watts per mile, 248, 224, variance of 24, 10.71% is the difference. So basically you're getting 10.71% more energy out of your battery by reducing your motorway driving to 65 as opposed to 70 on this particular trip. I actually think that's quite significant. I thought it was gonna be around the 5% figure. And I know there's lots of variances here and you know you could argue that you know, if it was a shorter trip on miles and, you know, on the motorway and less on A roads and so on and so forth. I know that. But for what it is, identical trips, identical weather, identical circumstances, to have a difference of 10.71 in the efficiency of the car based on uh, just a five miles an hour difference in the speed, I think it's quite significant. If we then break that down, um, the Tesla Model 3, I think, has got a 55 kilowatt battery. Um, I don't know whether there's a bit less of that is usable, but anyway, hear me out. I'm assuming that if you keep your car at least 20% charged, we're only ever gonna use 44 kilowatts in a, in a long trip, in a road trip. So if you charge up to 100%, and let's assume you're not gonna get let it go down below 20%, you'll use 44 kilowatts of energy before you recharge. And um, if you can see on here then, so the usable, based on trip A's stats of, um, uh, watts per mile, you'd get a range of 177.41 out of that 44 kilowatts of usable energy in your battery. Uh, if you reduce down to 65 miles an hour, same 44 kilowatts, 224 is the watts per mile, you would end up with 196.42, so a difference of 19 miles, which equates to the 10% difference that we've seen in that trip. So that, that's, that's quite significant, isn't it? 20 miles in, in, a, in a 200 mile journey saved by purely just reducing your speed to 65 from 70. So there we are. What's the conclusion? Is it gonna make me drive any differently? I probably will on a road trip actually, because to me the difference between 70 and 65 is not gonna make much difference as far as the enjoyment of the trip goes. Um, but you make your own conclusions. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do subscribe, please do like the video, share the video if you can. It'd be lovely to get our subscriptions up. And thank you once again for watching. Cheers.